hello, hello there, uh, radio fans. It's Bob in one KPR, and today we're going to take a quick look at what we're calling uh, System One or Sys One. And it, what this is, it consists of uh, basically five modules that uh, would work with just about any radio. I'm using for demo here uh, the uh, EAS uh, Four which is a uh, AM, FM, weather band, uh, emergency alert system, uh, broadcast monitor. So let's quickly get into this. Um, first thing is uh, this panel. We'll take some close-ups later. Uh, this panel is a VHF preamp. That's also on my website and elsewhere on uh, YouTube in, the, uh, in my channel. N1KPR is the channel. And uh, we provide various uh, gain stages of, uh, if you can see that moving around, of uh, 30 meg plus uh, gain uh, for the VHF stuff. Uh, we also have built in, we'll get to that later, HF and uh, MF and LF uh, preamps. All right, above that, we go to something that connects to the detector, actually the uh, IF output stage, uh, the last IF of the receiver. It's basically a condition monitoring uh, panel, which uh, shows you whether you have uh, uh, variable, uh, viable, I should say, uh, uh, the signal level to be on the linear portion of the uh, detector, and also discriminates between data on a carrier and just raw carrier. And uh, we can see that here. Uh, if I just kill the audio, you see there's a green light here. I'm going to kill the audio and uh, see if we can trigger that from here. It usually takes, there it goes, about three to four seconds. Now if you notice the red light flashing, that indicates there's either a dead carrier with no data on it or uh, no signal from the antenna line. So let's bring that back. Bring that back in. Um, we also have uh, the DMOD status, which actually indicates yellow being data on the carrier, red is carrier only. Again, this is fault indicator, uh, good signal no signal or down in the noise signal. Uh, carrier with data, open carrier. Uh, here's a bypass switch because what this will do is if there's uh, no data on the carrier, this will automatically uh, mute the uh, audio circuit. So you can bypass it if you want to, if you're searching around in a noisy band and you want to try and uh, see what you can hear down in the noise. Uh, detector status, we want to keep the detector, uh, This, in this case we're using a, uh, an envelope uh, demodulator uh, that's very fast and fairly linear, but we want to keep the audio above the lower, the turn on knee and below the saturation, so uh, we like to operate it in the linear portion, and this kind of gives you an indication of where you are. Uh, here's line level to the amplifying stage. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the modulation level, which looks at the carrier with the data removed. As you can see, we're about 100% on that signal. Uh, and then line audio out. And some nice things like uh, standby, you know, queuing device and so on. The next module, very simply, is a uh, an octave band equalizer from 100 hertz up to uh, uh, 6.2, I'm sorry, 6.4 kilohertz. And it's it's not parametric, they're fixed, but you can adjust the uh, uh, each octave band by plus or minus 15 dB. We've got an input control with a monitor level, output control monitor level. Very, very effective for long-term listening. It's a very nice device. Uh, Above that is the audio control. It's a six input mixer for AM, FM, weather, 
uh, if we're doing uh, diversity reception with analog digital or mode diversity, uh, low band uh, and uh, high band, single side band, uh, or antenna diversity with two different receivers. But anyhow, we can mix the amount of level. We have some equalization, uh, low frequency, high frequency. Uh, we have indicators to show when we're running out of gas, we're running out of rail on the uh, audio system and beginning the clip. So we have uh, average, max, and, and uh, peak clipping, uh, line level control, and power amp. This power amp is good for about 12 or 14 watts. Uh, generally listening, we're using less than a watt or so with a good speaker, but we have the capability of running a PA system. Uh, during demos and field day things and so forth. Up here we have signal monitor. We can look at the waveform, the modulation, or the actual sine wave of the audio. Again, level indicators on the audio bus that, that uh, uh, tell us how much signal level we have in the, this portion of the system. And uh, line feeds for STLs, other transmitters, uh, relaying, repeaters, recording, whatever you're going to do, we have outputs for those. We also have uh, detector verification indications here. Again, yellow means data on the carrier. Red means there's a signal there, but there's nothing on the carrier. And uh, we could mix and match. We can use one channel for the input signal, one channel for the out, or we could use one for receive, then the other for transmit. Or we could just combine them as they are now. Um, and a function control where we can go and do a queue and wait for the, uh, the studio or the tape recorder or whatever we're doing to uh, get rolling and just queue it right in like a normal studio function. The next panel up is the pre-selector. This is the culmination of Oh, years of work uh, on pre-selectors. This one is absolutely excellent. I'm very happy with it. Uh, quickly, it has uh, input impedance selection from anywhere from 36 to 1,200 ohms. It's a toroidal transformer. It gets you right in there where you have maximum energy transfer. Uh, we can freeze the system, you know, just shut down, short the antenna if you're doing other things. And we could also shunt uh, the system for ground protection over here. There's a series of filters. Uh, they're kind of involved, but I'll go through them quickly. The DC bleed, we can turn on and off. Uh, RF hash filter. Uh, the pulse type uh, noise blanker. Uh, this is a transient filter, which is uh, you know a fast, very fast pulse. And uh, after the uh, the transient is uh, impulse detection uh, would be a very sharp high frequency spike like from a nearby lightning crash or you know if you're operating during stormy weather or whatever. Over here we can change the bands to whatever we want and then fine tune. This is the actual input filter for the pre-selector. It is very sharp. And I've measured uh, 10 kilohertz pass band uh, at about 48 dB. It depends where you are in the in the spectrum, um, but typically anywhere from 24 to 48 dB of uh, sideband rejection. So it's uh, it's pretty effective. Uh, we have a, an attenuator, active attenuator, active preamp for 20 dB of gain, so we can push them in or out, and uh, you know, adjust the, uh, the RF gain accordingly. We also have, unique to this system, is an up converter. It's a 10 megahertz up converter. When you go in, everything you're receiving is uh, shoved up the band by 10 megahertz. So if you want to listen to uh, Cutler Submarine down at 20 kilohertz or WWVB at 60 kilohertz, you set the receiver uh, to 10 megahertz plus 60K. So it's 10.060, and you tune around, you can actually use the receiver where it's most efficient and operates the best up in the 10 meg portion of its operating realm, but you're actually receiving signals uh, 10 megahertz below. So 
it's a it's a cute little device so I hope I don't make you dizzy I'm gonna try to get in there and take a look at some of these things first of all here's the uh, the EAS receiver and the preamp above it uh, as you can see we could select the games that we want to not overdrive the system. The uh, the monitoring system with the uh, I don't know if we can get that on the camera. It's hard to it's hard to video backlit meters. But anyhow, here's the modulation and here's the uh, the actual detector audio. Um, this is the equalizer. Uh, the equalizer input uh, meter and the various various bands. I'm doing this as steady as I can. Okay. And the uh, the audio mixer. You can see that. Um, I guess we can see that pretty good. And there's our detector indicator, clip peak and the average, uh, the audio EQ, and then the, the six inputs. And we go up to the spectrum thing here. Uh, I guess that's the best we could do. We could monitor the signal there. Uh, we could do the modulation. You can see that. And of course the line feed input and output or receive and transmit that's right there and then the controlling circuits for feeding to tape or studio link and so forth here's the carrier and data indicators blinking away and then we go up finally to the pre-selector there's the up converter we talked about as you can see it's 10 10 megahertz or direct uh, the uh, attenuator and uh, preamp. Here's the pre-selector and the bands. This is going to be tricky. Let's see if we can change the bands here. Right now it's set between 300k and 1 meg. That's the uh, part of the broadcast band that I'm in. Uh, here are the filters. I don't think the camera is auto focusing very well. And the input control. So that's basically it. it. This stuff has not been rack mounted yet. And I expect uh, by next week or so we'll have, in the family room, we'll have that, uh, <laughs> that finished with a little spousal assistance. So thanks for watching. This is Bob N1KPR. My website, bobsamerica.com. Look for SIS1, System 1, under the uh, SWL page, bobsamerica.com, SIS1. And there will be photos of this available. And uh, we have other stuff on YouTube. My YouTube channel is in one KPR. So thanks for looking.